All righty. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hadid Drayford. Today, we have the pleasure and the honor to talk to the head coach of Towson Dodgeball himself, Mr. Colin Sports. How are you doing tonight, sir? How's it going, Shadid? Good to be on here. Thanks for having me. I, I know it's a late night. It's, it's Thursday. I know the the Patriots are currently playing football. I know you're a Ravens fan. I don't really care about the Patriots. So this is much this is way more efficient use of my time. So Absolutely. So Absolutely. I def I definitely know we got like some of the scores that took place from last weekend. Um just gonna quickly go off real quick. Bowling Green defeats G V sorry. Saginaw, not GV, Saginaw, <laughs> five to zero. That, that would have been something that I would have missed. <laughs> oh yeah, like that would have been breaking news. Um, yeah. Ohio State wins in overtime against BG five to four. Mm-hmm. Uh, BG beats Miami four to one. GVSU actually went to overtime and beat and beat Cincinnati four to three. Really good. Cincinnati game. It was a really fun game to watch. Oh, yeah, and that was even, like, on the main camera, too. So. I know. I know. I had to kind of watch it from up above, but still, uh, really, really fun game. Great back and forth between those two. Um, yeah. There's, there's a lot of talk, a lot to talk about with those two teams, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Cincinnati defeated Ohio 6-2. Uh, Cincinnati defeated JMU 6-1. Um, Ohio State defeated JMU 4-2. GV defeated JMU 4-2, Ohio State defeated Saginaw 4-2, Saginaw defeated Miami 5-1, uh, Ohio defeated Miami 6-1, BG defeated Miami 4-1, and then the doubleheader between um, Nebraska and UWP 4-1 and 3-2 respectfully in favor of the Cornhuskers. Nebraska. Yes, Nebraska. So we went through a lot of scores really quickly. Um, but Colin, what is like some of the games that kind of really stood out to you? And, and not only in terms of the score, but, you know, the games that you was able, you know, to get a chance to watch. No, I mean, some some things that jump out to me right away is that UC and uh, GV are both you know, they've established themselves that they're both going to be top contenders this year. Uh, and that was a great first match, I think, of hopefully a few that we'll see between those two teams this year. Um, very interesting back and forth with GV jumping out to that 2-0 lead in the first half. Uh, and Wes firing up his troops to take a 3-2 lead. And then going right back to, to GV, getting that third point, taking it into OT and, and getting the dub there. Um, which just seemed like typical, you know, business as usual for Grand Valley back to that. You know, it doesn't matter if we're down. If we're down late, we're going to find a way. We're going to pull it out. And that's exactly what uh, it, what happened in that game. Um, I think Ben Smart has definitely made his presence known that he's back again. And he's at the same, if not an even higher level than what he was when he won MVP back in 2020. Uh, he's definitely going to be a guy that, You know, teams are going to struggle to get out and he will single-handedly be able to turn points and turn games on his head or on their head. So that's definitely something to look out for. Um, Their captain, Tyler Peach, who I believe played with a broken finger. um, Wow. And still, I I don't think he threw, but he caught anything and everything that came his way. So that was, uh, that's definitely a little bit scary as a coach to know that a team has a weapon like that, that, they haven't really taken him out of the case yet, and he hasn't even thrown, and he's still making impacts like that. Um, now, I mean, I, it's not a surprise to me, but I think they're back to being, you know, their traditional selves. And UC is definitely established with, you know, hanging so close and winning convincingly in their other two that they're not too far behind either. And they're probably just a couple, uh, a few more games of experience away from from being able to to flip that result. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, It's it's crazy just to say, like, business as usual, because that was GV first game right off the bat, and they was going against a team that was undefeated and coming in with a lot of confidence. The fact that Cincinnati only lost 4-3 to in overtime 
where most teams can't even force GV to get to overtime. That alone is a really nice way to, you know, start off your impression against what many people consider over the years, like the, the standard of the NCDA. That's not an easy thing to do. Absolutely. Uh, and especially for Cincinnati being in their, what, their third year as a program? To be right. able to, to get to that level so quick. I mean, hats off to their captains there. Um, and to Wes for being able to to bring that program up um, and get them to the level that they're at so quickly. Um, only other team I can think that did that was James Madison uh, when they were first founded into the league and they immediately jumped onto the scene and started contending uh, immediately. That's the only other team I can really think of off the top of my head that is instantly in contention as one of the top teams in the league. Man, we're going to get to JMU momentarily. I know we we can't we we can't just let the sauce out just like that, but uh, we'll definitely get to that. Um, I think one of the things that really kind of jump off the page with me was obviously not only Cincinnati performance, but also Ohio State performance because in that first tournament they went one and one respectfully. But mm-hmm. in this, but in this next tournament, like they went undefeated and getting key wins against James Madison, um, Saginaw, and I'm trying to figure out the last. Oh, and then also getting an overtime win against BG. I mean, that's absolutely that's that's not an easy thing to do, and it's crazy because like BG in their first tournament, I they kind of struggle against Akron. But I think, like, they got the win against Cleveland State and Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's safe, to I, say, it, it's safe to say, in my humble opinion, Cincinnati is the top team in Ohio. And I'll be hard-pressed to say that Ohio State is the number two team. I'll be very hard-pressed to say otherwise. I think it's tough to disagree with that. Cincinnati with you – know, I think they beat them pretty convincingly um, in that first tournament. Um, Ohio State, that is. And then Ohio State, I think, coming out. and I think Bowling Green, hats off to them. I mean, that's incredible for them to bounce back and, you know, pick up essentially two and a half wins, you know, an overtime loss only counting as half a half an exchange Um that's a really good performance, and I think they're probably sitting right there at number three in Ohio. Uh, I think Ohio is right now got to be the the best region um, as far as having you know their top three teams um, of anyone so far. Uh, we'll touch on we've got we'll see Michigan State this weekend and Saginaw and Grand Valley uh, this weekend, but I think at this point in time, as of right now, you got to you know tip your cap to Ohio. Um, because they've come out and their top teams have played well against teams from other regions. Absolutely. And to quickly kind of say away about the tournament that's taking place this weekend, we're only going to have three Michigan schools in attendance, Saginaw, GV, Michigan State. Excuse me. We haven't heard anything from Central Michigan at all this year. So it's, it's tough. Kind of, yeah, it's tough because we remember in 2019, they was playing GV in the Final Four. Took at, them to overtime. In the took final them to four. overtime. And, and now, like, since, you know, uh, the Michigan Dodgeball Cup in 2020, we haven't heard a peep from them at all. So, but, uh, but yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's a lot tougher, obviously, for obvious reasons with uh, – with COVID, just recruiting, hosting, um, it's tough to, to get those guys back out there. And it's easily affecting some programs a lot harder than it is for others. So you hope that they can get everything together in the spring, round up a good group of guys, and get back to, to their traditional selves. I think the league's a lot better when when Central Michigan is contending. So obviously hope that they get back to uh, to their traditional selves and can get back in the swing of things in Michigan. Absolutely. The league is definitely better when the the the, the chips, you know, are, are in the contention of things. Uh speaking of contentions of things, uh, one of the things in my humble opinion that I was actually surprised was JMU did not get a single win. Yeah, I mean, 
you got to give them credit for, for making the trip out there and for testing themselves. Uh, Evan Eschenberg is still I, – I watched the <laughs> Ohio State game. He is still, without a doubt, one of the top players in this league. Um, I believe it was – I think the score was 3-1 to one at the time. Evan had gotten out – I want to say it was at least eight Ohio State players in a row. He threw out the second to last player. The last player threw a cross, and he had it in his hands. He tried to catch it. Dropped out of his hands. So at that point, I think it's a seven on one Mm -hmm. uh, in favor of JMU to try to get that game back to 3-2. Catch, 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 catch. Wow. Completely turned the tide there. Um, and that put it at four to one, put the game out of reach. Uh, they'll get there. Um, I think they they lost a good amount of talent from 2020. Uh, and Drew's doing a good job of getting them back to the level where they need to be. But it's just going to take reps for them and props to them for making the trip out there um, and testing themselves against Grand Valley, probably going to be the number one power rank team, I would guess. Um whenever those come out uh, against Cincinnati, who is probably going to be either number two or number three. And then Ohio state, who is probably top five as well. They played a gauntlet of a schedule. Um, Right. So you got to give them credit there. Uh, And even though they, they didn't pick up any wins on the day, they got some valuable experience. And I think that's only going to help them moving forward. Yeah. The crazy thing about Evan Essenberg is Let's just call it what it is, man. My man is just built different. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I'm just going to say, like, I remember, I remember the Beast tournament in 2020 where he just had a look in his eye against Towson, <laughs> and he just took over from the right hand side, and my man was unstoppable. Then I saw my man playing against, you know, UVA. Um, and my man just decided at that moment, like, you know what? I just feel like taking over. And my man's like, give me a ball. They give him a ball, and he's just just plowing through people, like just cutting mm-hmm. the grass, just making that just real short. And and yeah. the, and it's funny that you mentioned that because you said like you saw the moment that he just kind of just went berserk against Ohio State. My man mm-hmm. hit me up. Or on a DM on Facebook, he was like, hey, Shadi, like, check out this clip, you know, between me and this, you know, Grand Valley. I, I pretty much just took everybody out on the team by myself. And I and as I was, like, watching that video, I was like, yo, like, you know, you, you're not going to hear somebody from VCU say this very often about a JMU player. But I can say this with full confidence, especially since I'm out of the league. We do not deserve Evan Essenborg. We really don't. <laughs> like, we don't deserve this man. Like, I know, like, he's, he's, in a, he's in graduate school. He's doing the Air Force ROTC. My man's just living his best life right now. Um, but when, when I say, like, when he wants to play and he actually cares, there's not, especially right now, in this current, there are um, very few players in the league right now that can contend with him when he's at his best, which is very scary to think of, especially as an East Coast school where we're going to have to face him maybe in our December 4th tournament. That's definitely something that is going to take some, some game planning uh, to figure out how we can, how we can eliminate him and, and keep him off the court as much as possible and take him out of a, uh, out of contention as much as possible, but he's he's a ridiculous player. He, the game looks so easy for him at times. It's um, it is is literally like my man is like driving a Tesla and the vehicle just driving itself. Like he's not even like he's just on cruise control. Like and it's funny mm-hmm. because like he's an easy guy to talk to. He joke around and even when joking around, he'd be getting people out. But when he just slightly just turned that switch. Like, my man just like, you know what? I just feel like hitting people. And, yeah. and sure enough, <laughs> like, people's like, wait, what, what, were, you, what were you supposed to do? <laughs> like, like, they'd be mad confused, but, yeah. It's just... And I think as soon as JMU starts to build those pieces around them um, and have some guys where 
you know, even when he's off the court, they can still trust, you know, a couple of those guys to make a solid throw, to get a catch and close out points um, when he's not on the court. Um, they're going to be a really tough team uh, to go up against, and they're going to be a team that no one is going to want to face late in the season, especially not on uh, on Sunday at Nationals. Uh, that's definitely a team that you're going to want to be on the opposite side of the bracket um, for. That's that's for certain. And from an East Coast perspective, uh, I'm not even worried about them falling off at all. No matter what their ranking says, they're going to be a tough team to play um, anytime they take the court. So definitely, like I said, props to them for making the trip out there. I wish we could have gone out there as well. Um, just, you know, issues with with traveling there for us and, you know, timing of everything. Uh, obviously, we want to try to get as many games for us as possible, you know, so we can get those reps as well. Just wasn't in the cards this weekend. Um, unfortunately, not in the cards the rest of the semester. We'll be hosting December 4th um, at our place, probably another East Coast only tournament. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, it's, um, I think travel is without a doubt going to be the most important and getting games in is going to be the most important things for teams uh, as we close out this semester and then early on in the spring as we move closer to nationals in April. Yeah, we can definitely use this as a good time to segue into uh, the GVS. Sorry, keep on saying GVS. You <laughs> Saginaw, Saginaw shootout that would be taking place this Saturday, which we have the fall of teams in contention: Ball State, Michigan State, GVSU, and the host school Saginaw Cardinals themselves. And mm -hmm. pretty much every team's going to play against each other. In my humble opinion, I, I want to say that the two games that I personally want to watch is going to be, you know, Saginaw against, you know, GVSU, because that's always a battle of the valleys. Um, but then also MSU versus GV. That game right there between those two teams is going to tell me the strength of the Michigan region as a whole. 100%. And just, yeah, the matchup of all, even uh, Saginaw and Michigan State, Saginaw having some games under their belt um, and Michigan State, uh, this will be their first tournament. Um, I'm not too sure of the schedule yet, but if that's the first game of the day between Saginaw and Michigan State, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a close game early on. I have, I'm really not too in the loop on Michigan State's roster. Um, I have a couple notes. I know that they had the rookie of the year back in 2020, Barry Butler. Um, right. And I'm going to guess he's going to be their captain, but he's, he's going to be one of their, one of their assistant captains. They, they actually just announced added a new cap. Okay. Yep. Um, they actually recently just updated on their Facebook, uh, pretty much a list of all, of the player that's coming on and it's a really good mixture between juniors and freshmen and I think there's at least one or at least a few sophomores but the team from what I've been what I've been hearing is going to be solid. I think they're going to be solid. They got they got two really good coaches and Kevin and Rebecca making sure like they're on point. They're probably going to be some nervous, some nerves coming into that first tournament, but I think they're going to be solid. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm taking a look right now at uh at their roster. Uh, definitely seeing some good returners uh, in uh, in Josh and Jack up there at the top. Yep. Um, who else do I recognize? And from what I was seeing um, back in twenty, uh, what was it? 2020 spring 2020 they were i think gearing up for a solid run as well um, yes they they were putting together a really good team and i and this is just from being an old head and being out of the league um i don't <laughs> recognize a lot of those names but i i take i take a lot of people's word very seriously and when people say that they had a really good recruiting class i'm gonna believe that you know they've got a really solid roster from top to bottom uh, and they've got definitely some talent at the top to be able to lead. Um, so that'll be – all of those matchups will definitely be interesting. I think 
obviously the the marquee matchup of the day is going to be Michigan State and Grand Valley, I believe, um, at least on paper, is what a lot of people are thinking. So we'll see. I think Grand Valley has the uh, experience. Um, and, you know, obviously from this season and from uh, – you know, years past, I think they have a couple more returners than Michigan State. So I think you got to give a slight edge to Grand Valley. But that'll be a very exciting matchup to watch. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how the Michigan region shapes up after having, I guess, two tournaments for GV and Saginaw and then the first tournament for Michigan State. Seeing how that shapes up. And then credit to Ball State. Um, for making the trip out there um, and really putting themselves up into the gauntlet against those three teams. Uh, it's the only way you're going to get better as a team is to play against this top talent. Um, so credit to them for making the trip out there. I think that's going to be their first appearance of the season. If I am correct, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Shadid, but I believe that's their first appearance of the season as well. Um, it is. So it's good to see them back on the court. Uh Hopefully they can, you know, take some of this uh, experience. I'm expecting them to probably come out with just some, you know, some lessons, some experience, probably not any wins, but maybe they can take a couple of points, you know, walk out of there with their heads held high, and then hopefully they can play against some some similar talent uh, down the road with a chance to, you know, continue to move up um, and keep getting better and better uh, as the season goes on. Yeah, it's just a tall task with Ball State. I mean, because they, they told us in the past, like, if you try to get better quickly, you play against Michigan teams, and that's what they're doing. And, you know, coming back from the pandemic, that's a very tough assignment right off the bat. But hats off to them, you know, for making that commitment. But, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get a good understanding of the Michigan region after this this tournament. Um, and then also, you know, just, you know, we don't want to overlook the, the Midwest Conference. Uh, sure. Nebraska, Nebraska did defeat UWP twice um, at their home, which is also key wins as well. Um, from my understanding, UWP do have, like, a lot of returners. They had at least, like, 18 people at least register. So I was it's under big. the assumption. Yeah, so I was under the assumption that uh, UWP was going to win. Come to find out, I was completely wrong. So shout out to Nebraska for proving me wrong. Uh, I'll definitely eat some crow tonight and tomorrow for sure. Um, <laughs> it's always tough to be the team twice in a day, especially with those double header formats. Um, thinking back to our experience uh, back in. 2019 I guess it would have been fall of 2018 uh we ended that semester with a doubleheader against James Madison uh and we ended Oof. up taking the first game and then it's just so hard, especially once you play the team and then you just take a quick break and you have to go back and do it again and you basically have just given away your entire blueprint and they can go back right ahead and just take all of that and throw it right back at you um it's tough to beat a team twice uh, so credit to Nebraska for being able to to go up against a, a seasoned and experienced uh, Wisconsin Platteville team and come out of there with two wins. Uh, obviously tough for them being out there in the uh, in the midway to be able to to make trips um, outside of nationals. Um, so hopefully they can you know find some some funding somewhere, um, maybe some fundraising some love from their sport club office and they can make some trips out to either Michigan or Ohio uh, to some of these tournaments and they can test themselves against some of the other teams in the league. I think that's something that I think everyone in this league is hoping to see more of is more, uh, more travel from, from teams outside of Michigan, outside of Ohio and outside of the East coast and continue to expand to these different regions and, start to to just be present really all around the country um yeah As so it would be it would be definitely really cool to see a team like nebraska or wisconsin platteville be a contender uh when it gets late in the season yeah just very quickly uh got some new information on the ncda captain page um 
Cleveland State is hosting the tournament on December the fourth. Um, of course, trying yeah. to, yeah, I know. Trying to see if they can get, <laughs> trying to see if they get a last minute tournament, and they're gonna have one court, and they'll have at least mm-hmm. one team interested in coming. They're looking for two more. So UWP yeah. is planning on. They're interested for that tournament, so that's actually a good place good. to start. Absolutely, that's great for them. Um, I I know just speaking from our experience for Towson, um, I know that we have. We have to give basically a month's notice if we're traveling out of our region, which is, I believe, a 300-mile radius, um, which is basically any Ohio school for the most part, definitely Michigan. Um, so that it makes it tough for us. Obviously, we would love to be flexible. We'd love to go to – I know Cincinnati's hosting on the 4th. We were planning on Ohio State. Uh, on that date, but unfortunately they had to cancel that tournament, um, which is why we stepped up um, and, you know, threw our name in the hat, like we'll host a a December 4th. And we initially had some interest, I think, from some Ohio teams. But then when Cincinnati steps in and they go ahead and decide to host, then obviously all of those Ohio teams are going to flock there. And logistically wise, I would love to go to Cincinnati. Um, I would love to play against some of those Ohio teams, but logistically wise, it just it wasn't in the cards, unfortunately. Um, but we're hoping to we're hoping to change that and travel a little bit more. Um, and I'm hoping to get at least four tournaments in before nationals uh, come the spring. I think that'll really help our guys with getting those important reps um, and getting to see some some other talent from around the league uh, prior to prior to April. Yeah, a hundred percent. I know some of the teams are already currently planning their tournaments in the spring semester right now, so that's definitely pretty exciting to see Cincinnati hosting a tournament the day after your tournament on the fifth. Kind of throws mm-hmm. a monkey wrench into things, but I'm pretty sure y'all can coordinate something in regards to that. All righty. Um, with that being said, whew. you want to touch Current- on East Coast? We haven't really yep. talked about the East Coast too much in this yep. particular podcast. I know it's touched on a little bit in the last one, but I guess now that James Madison has played out of region, we kind of got an update on how, I guess, at this point in time, our 2A, 2B team and James Madison, I would I would kind of call it. I think they're they're pretty close to Penn State. I know Penn State eked out a win in their first meeting, but – at this point, I would put that. That's basically my ranking is what I've got it right now. I've got, I think our guys are. I think we've in our first couple tournaments we've established ourselves as um, it's the top team on the East Coast so far. Um, I'd kind of put Penn State at a two, and then I, I'd say James Madison is like a two A. I want to say um, Maryland was definitely impressive. I think. At their yep. home tournament, they 100% improved on uh, on our tournament uh, from Towson to Maryland. They yep. looked really good. They were catching the ball well um, and looked and a the, lot better as a team. And the kicker so is – exciting. Mm-hmm. And the kicker is, like, when they enter y'all tournament, they only had six practices in because their, their, um, their student fair kept on got pushed back, like, three different times. Yeah. So, so by the time like they was actually able to get it, they only had six persons in. So I knew that it's going to be a lot better. Definitely. Um. Yeah. So Maryland has uh, Maryland definitely improved from their first tournament. Uh, Virginia looks really good as well. I think them and Maryland uh, is unfortunate that we didn't get to see that matchup at Maryland. Uh, UVA had to drop late. Um. But it was exciting. I think that'll be an exciting matchup. Um, to kind of see who takes over that uh, that three slash four position in the East, um, Maryland made a quarterfinal run in 2019. I think a lot of people kind of overlook that that they were a top eight team in the league, and they were definitely impressive towards the end of that season. And I think they still have the leadership um, there to be able to get back to that level. And you know, it was a shame that. I know Wes was talking about WVU, West Virginia. Um, He was excited to see them. Unfortunately, they had to drop late. 
Um, yeah. So I'm hoping that that doesn't discourage him from coming out to any other tournaments. Uh, one team I'd like to really see host a tournament in the spring would be Penn State. I think yeah. their location, and I know they have the facilities. Their school is massive. I yep. don't know anything about their policies if they're allowed to host, but I'm hoping that restrictions can lighten up. But I think their location would be paramount to have, hopefully, West Virginia. It's not too far for them. And then hopefully some Ohio schools. Um, it's definitely a lot closer State College than it is to come all the way to either College Park or Towson um, or Harrisonburg, anything like that. So I really, I guess this is a message, Penn State, please try to host in the spring. We'd love to go. And I'm sure a lot of Ohio teams, maybe even some Michigan teams, would uh, would take you up on that offer as well. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case. And, uh, and just very quickly, I would kind of go through my personal opinions of where the East Coast kind of stands right now. Yeah. Towson is definitely clear number one. There's no debate about that. Penn State is currently number two. And it's going to be weird for me saying this because you never would hear me say this, that Jamie is currently is the third best team on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. That's just the old man just talking right now. Like, it's, it's – I can't – Still can't wrap my head around it. Um, for, and it's it's tough to it's tough to disagree with that. I mean, just based on the results that have happened yeah. so far, um, it's tough to disagree with that. But like I had said before, us saying this is only going to add fuel to their fire. Uh, so I got to be careful with. Uh, oh with yeah, saying that because oh. I know that they're just taking everything we're saying and just putting it right on the bulletin board. Like, oh oh we're yeah, we're the third I mean, best team on the East Coast right now. Okay. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah. Trust me, and I've been been trying my best to be very neutral and very supportive because there's been a lot of teams, okay, like a lot of teams, both publicly and privately, just trash talking JMU, and they don't even care at this point. Like I, I was watching the film, I'm seeing players saying things that I can't even repeat on the stream. Um, which you will, which will be seen. You're not referring to that Cincinnati video, are you, Shadid? Oh no, no, not even that <laughs> video. I was talking about the Ohio State versus JMU video, but I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that alone because I promise you, there will be some highlights of Cincinnati some of did not hold back with that video, and I think that's <laughs> something that unfortunately they might regret if those teams end up playing again. Oh, oh man, I already know that. The rivalry between these two teams are unreal. And as a commentator and as a videographer for the league, like this is what you need because you got to build up a good story when you're doing the commentate to get people engaged. Uh, Fourth team on the East Coast right now, despite their record, I would still say is, um, is Virginia. They did get that key win against Maryland. Maryland is fifth, but they're actually not too far behind based off of what mm-hmm. we've been seeing. And then this one is actually going to pay me. I will say, even though I haven't had a chance to see them play, I'm going to say that number six is actually West Virginia. And I will actually You're going to put them ahead of your boys. I'm going, I'm going to put them ahead of my auto monitor, man. Yeah, I'm going to put them ahead. VCU is currently the last team on the East Coast. And it's, it's 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 tough to say. I mean, there's definitely one thing that I definitely noticed um, in regard to some of the other teams in comparison to my automata is what, you know, I went to one practice of VCU, it's like back in September. And, you know, you know, just kind of just seeing the players and whatnot. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, they're practice ready. They're practice ready. When I saw... G when I saw um um Virginia and um James Madison play, I'm like, oh, they're tournament ready. Okay. They're tournament ready. Then when I saw Towson, I was like, oh, like they're they're tournament ready, but they want to make a statement. And then, you know, I saw Maryland's like, okay, you know, they transitioned from practice to tournament, but they're getting there. And then like <laughs> When I when I saw them play at Tau, at um, Maryland, I was like, oh, "This is going to be this is going to be one of those years." So, it's it's a big I difference. Think that's, 
I think that was an important step to kind of transition from what you said to transition from being a practice ready team to a tournament ready team. I don't think you can become a tournament ready team without playing in a tournament. So they had to bite the bullet. They probably yeah. knew going in, Ike probably knew going in, it wasn't going to be pretty. Yeah. Um, but they got it out of the way. They got some guys that have now seen, you know, what a tournament looks like um, at this level. So that will only help them. I know that they'll be back to competing. Um, I'm sure that that, uh, that kind of trio with Maryland, UVA, and VCU, there's going to be a lot of parity between those teams, um, hopefully for the second half of this season. Um, I think we'll start to see some results going going each way. Uh, yeah, yeah the that'll scary. Be, that'll be good for, uh, you know, for the bottom half of our league. And I think we're probably, like I had said earlier, I think that Ohio is probably at this point in time the best region from what we've seen as far yep. as having the most talent amongst their teams. Um, but I think that we are pretty close. Um, I would say it's second just because Michigan hasn't played enough games for me to, to have a, a read on, on their talent just yet. Um, and I, I just... think seeing Maryland, uh, and, you know, as JMU gets better, I had already kind of talked about them and touched on how they'll be back to their normal selves, I believe. Um, and I think seeing either Maryland, uh, UVA, or VCU, maybe even West Virginia, um, I think that we'll be, we'll be well represented, especially at Nationals. And I think that you'll see a lot of East Coast teams making a run to uh, – to the next round um, of that of that bracket. Yeah, I mean UVA arguably, in my humble opinion, has probably the best overall player on the East Coast in Jake Corman. Um, really, really good player. Really, like really, really solid. And we always knew that he always had an arm. Um, like back when he was a sophomore, like he was coming on mm-hmm. to the scenes, but, but now he's looking like the complete player. And like when he's on, it's, it's a pretty scary thing to see like in real time, but I can definitely also say that Towson from top to bottom is the most complete team out of everybody, which is one of the reasons why y'all have an advantage. The biggest thing that's going to determine whether or not the East coast or the Michigan region is, you know, going to be contending towards that top spot. It's not just like what the top teams do, but also what that second and third team about to do. So seeing how Michigan State is actually going to play out against GVSU, because it's safe to say that we're all assuming that Michigan State is going to defeat Saginaw. They're going to defeat Ball State. And they're not going to say it publicly, but they're definitely saying it privately. It's like, oh, yeah, like, we're circling that matchup against GB. And then on the same sense, you know, Penn State, Towson, they kind of look at each other like, hey, like, you want to keep dancing? Because we ain't got no problem. Because you guys are going to say, like, hey, we beat you twice. Penn State is like, yeah, but you only beat us by one point each time. Mm-hmm. And James, you in the mix is saying, like, hey, like, y'all just – Going to just completely just forget about us, huh? Yeah. Like you, like you, Penn State. You only beat us once. Towson had the right to. Towson had the right to talk because they've beaten us several times. I mean, outside of y'all, as in Towson, nobody has defeated JMU more than once. We're talking about Maryland, Penn State, and VCU all combined. So only three wins off of JMU. You're the only team that defeated JMU multiple times. So it's 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 going to be interesting, like how things going to play out in the spring, you know for sure. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Shadid, I want to hear, I want to hear your if if you're able to do this, I want to hear your. I'm not going to touch on power ranking being a coach in the league. I'm not going to rank <laughs> rank teams from every region we kind of touched on each region but right. i, I kind of want to hear your uh, i want to hear your maybe top 5 top 7 top 10 uh, Yo. on where where we're at after uh, 
<laughs> after that uh, that tournament this past weekend? You you always asking the tough questions, my guy. <laughs> always, even when I don't want to answer it. <sighs> All right, so. Yeah, because I'm not going to put in power rankings. That's that's not what I'm going to do. Um, I want to see what the standing is looking like. Could that give me a general idea? Mm-hmm. All right, so number one is GV. It's just kind of hard. It's It's kind of hard for me to say not them just because mm-hmm. they always going to have the target on their back no matter what. It doesn't matter as a pandemic. It doesn't matter as a regular year. There's always an expectation. You play good GV, you have to play your best dodgeball. You want to lose. Until someone can change that narrative for other teams, especially since they went undefeated, that, that's going to be a hard sell for me. Number two, I will respectfully say Cincinnati right now because the only loss that they have is against GV. Mm-hmm. Which now brings me to number three, Towson, because they are they are undefeated. They are undefeated, and and I know some people they're gonna look at this, they're gonna feel some type of way towards me, and respectfully so. I, I welcome it. Like I'm not telling you, hey, Shadi, like what the bleep? Like it's fine. It's fine. Like it is what it is, and it's not Towson's fault. Y'all had every intention of going to the Ohio State on December the fourth. It's not your fault that clubs cannot follow protocol that's not that's not your fault that's somebody else's fault so you can only play the the opponents that you currently have right now um number four though i would say would be the ohio state university and the reason why i say that is because after they had that tough loss against cincinnati they bounced back pretty nicely getting the key week getting the key win against saginaw Getting a you know, and also getting key runs against the other um, Ohio's opponents. Number five. You know what I, I think would be before you say that I think a really great matchup that I think could be seen at a possible I don't know maybe a Penn State tournament would be mm-hmm. Ohio State and Penn State. Penn yep. State has a lot of really great talent, a lot of great throwers, some good catchers, and Ohio State is a really really well organized team. Um, that I think would definitely be able to to hang with some of Penn State's throwers. I think that would be a really exciting matchup and a matchup that we could definitely see if maybe Penn State hosted a tournament in the spring. Another another plug I'm going to throw in to try to get that uh, to get that out there. Um, no, I, I completely agree with Ohio State. They they were really impressive um, and they established themselves as a clear. I think number two at the moment on the East coast and, or on the Ohio, I'm sorry. Um, And I would not be surprised if they were able to claw a little bit closer to Cincinnati, maybe play them close, take them to overtime, um, maybe squeak out an OT win or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to do that before the end of the season. Um, I think that they definitely have a really well organized team um, and they have the playmakers to be able to swing a game, uh, just like that. Yeah, absolutely. They're not that far off either. Not at all. Number five, I actually would say Penn State would be in that mm-hmm. fifth spot. I mean, you can only play the opponents that you can play. The only loss that they have is against Towson. Um, now, number six and seven is where things get interesting. Right now, on the ranking, they have Akron and Bowling Green within that ranking. I'm going to be like, no, I'm not doing that. What I will say is, and I might be taking a huge L if Michigan State does not come through, I'm placing Michigan State at number six just because they haven't played. That's the only reason why. Once I see how they're going to play, don't be surprised. Either jump up or jump down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, again, that's not a knock against Michigan State. I know they're going through some protocol situation, how to do some recruiting. But I definitely trust the coaches there. They're going to get their team right, and I would not be surprised if they shoot way up and get a lot closer towards that top three or top four. Um, And I would say, like, number seven right now, probably based off of what I've seen. Um, And, again, this is going to be weird saying this. 
it's JMU. That's that's weird. You, you're not going to hear me say JMU out of the top six. It's a weird thing. But I don't think that Bowling Green and Akron is currently better than JMU right now. I just don't think so. Of course, that could be wrong in the spring semester, but I I got to place JMU right, right there for right I now. I think that would have been a really competitive game. Uh, if JMU were to play, if they were to play a fourth or a fifth game, um, which obviously is really tough on any team at any tournament playing four games in a day. But I think if they were to play a team like Bowling Green or Akron um, in between playing their gauntlet of a schedule, I think that would have been a real test to see if, you know, they are just, you know, just not good enough to be at that top tier yet, but they're still right below it. Um, or if they're really going through some serious growing pains and need to to just continue to improve and continue getting reps. But I think that would have been a really close matchup, uh, maybe like a three to two uh, type score between either um, Bowling Green, who was clearly on their game uh, at that weekend, uh, or even maybe an Akron, uh, who's definitely been playing well and been contending um, in their games. Yeah, Akron got really solid coaches and Kobe Bryceland and and Adam, and I know they're gonna be fine. Uh, I know like their first tournament they went zero and two, but then they bounced back and then they went three and zero. And I I know they're gonna get better, and that's probably why like right now I'm gonna say that they're at number eight. But do not be surprised if they move up based off of what they can do. I think the Ohio region. Because if we both say that they're the best region, the fact that these Ohio teams are beating up on each other is going to force them all to get better. Mm-hmm. So, so that's that's kind of like part of the reason why I put them at number eight. But I would not be surprised if they can move up. Uh, number nine, I would probably say it'd be Bowling Green, and pff, yeesh, we'll have to go down. Deep on the chart to figure out what number ten is. I'll Give say me Lincoln. Us. Oh, Nebraska. you going? Go, oh, oh, that ass. Give me the Huskers. Give, oh, that credit. Two two oh. wins. Two wins against an experienced Wisconsin Platteville team. And like you said, they they can't control who they play. They're just oh, going out and uh, and beating whoever's in front of them. So, Ooh, who's that's... to say that you know they're not on the same level as some of these Ohio teams? Um, oh, I think they're deserving of that number ten spot, even if, uh, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're not. It's it's tough to say. Um, it's it's tough to in a region play. That's what makes the sport so great, the league so great. Is at the end of the year, all these regions come together and you decide the true, the true national champion. Um, and obviously, the bigger we get, hopefully, the more regions will get represented. But, uh. Give some credit to we'll give some credit to Nebraska, I think. All right, that's that's definitely a bold take right there because those first four I felt very <laughs> confident in, but after I hit number five, I was like, Holy smokes, man, somebody somebody's gonna watch this video. They're gonna take the clip that they heard, not everything mm-hmm. that was Ma- being yeah, I, going they back gonna take saying that. that I know that Maryland, <laughs> Virginia all of these teams are going to be circling. Like, Saginaw is going to circle that. Yep, um, they're going to be they're going to be looking at me and it's like, oh yeah, should we remember at this point on this part what you said? I'm like, hey man, this is based off of the information that I had. That's not how I feel about you. Now, some of these teams, publicly and privately, they don't care about you. I care about you. <laughs> like I can pull up the clips or some of the trash talking. Which yeah. you will, you, you, you've got it. all of it. You've got oh, yeah. all of it on there. Oh, 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 yeah, oh yeah. And, and you've we got posted the receipts. Oh yeah, we got the receipts, and we we're gonna repost it because what I'm talking about, we're gonna be creating entertaining videos. Like this is what's all about. It's it's, it's college players representing their schools, uh, showing emotions, and letting their feelings be known, not just with their words, but with their actions. And, um, yeah, there's definitely been some clips that have been sent my way of certain people getting headshotted and headshotted on. And they wanted me to, like, hey, like, make sure you get this part now. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, I got you. So they, 
yeah, it's 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 getting it's getting spicy, and and I and I love it. Um, Definitely. But yeah, we're we're close to the fifty minute mark. So, uh, with that being yeah. said, Colin, do you have anything else you want, you know, to let the people know? Hey, I I'll I'll plug my guys. I I love the way that uh, that we're playing right now. The passion, the energy that we've got um is the same if not higher than any other team that we've had in the past these guys want to keep the same level um that we've been at which is really exciting to be a part of just seeing how much we've grown since you know we came back from uh from that hiatus um in the uh uh in the off season um it's incredible how much we've gotten better in the last two months and just seeing from our practice tonight, we are continuing to get better. We're continuing to gel as a team. Uh, and I'm really, really looking forward to the spring season with these guys. Um, we've got talent from from 1 all the way to 18. We've got a lot of young guys who are really starting to pick up the game and now have some tournament experience on, under their belt. After this semester, they'll have probably nine or ten games, depending on how it uh, shapes up on the fourth, however many games we get, um, to be able to then take that into the winter um, and then come back in the spring. Having some guys that now have that true experience, being a leader and being a dodgeball player for some of our rookies, it's really exciting, um, and I'm really excited to see how far we can go. Um definitely in uh in the spring yeah yeah it's definitely gonna be exciting hopefully we can get some word in february with uh, the jmu beast tournament which has always been always been one of my favorite tournaments to attend to and to watch as a fan so that's always a good one the akron war is one that i really hope comes back uh, that's always a crucial two-day tournament that I think a lot of teams definitely strive to participate in so they can get that true feel of, you know, having playing two days in a row and being able to adapt to that and then taking what you learn from those two-day tournaments and transferring it to, uh, to nationals. I think that was something that was really crucial when we made our run back in 2019 was being able to go to Akron. Uh, we didn't come with a full squad, and we got to play against a gauntlet of really good Michigan teams and really good Ohio teams. Um, and that was a really, really good test for us, and I think a really good experience that that only helped us um, on the way that year. Yeah, I'll definitely be looking forward to, to attending that tournament. Just kind of need to know in advance because my, my schedule is getting – Really, really book right now, and I, I definitely want to leave some room for the NCDA and definitely give us some quality clips. Um, Absolutely, and Shadid, props to you um, for being able to take time out of your busy schedule for for helping get all of these streams organized. You were you were helping coordinate a stream in Lincoln from wherever you were uh, on on that past Saturday, and you were helping remotely stream uh, in Ohio from. Uh, from your location so thank you for taking your time to to help this league grow uh off the court and get that content out there so we can continue to grow uh to grow a fan base to grow our membership uh and really turn this thing into something special and try to to right the ship get back on track post covid uh thank you for all that you do i our streaming is getting infinitely better uh mostly because of yourself and uh, and the time that you've put in. So definitely thank you to yourself for, for all of that. I appreciate the kind words, sir. I really do. Like, I say it all the time, like, as I'm doing this, it's not a one-man show. They might see me as the face, but there's always a team of people always wanting to help me out, always, you know, giving me food, giving me water, you know, <laughs> giving me the information, giving me the dimensions of the gem. It, it really is a team effort, so I'm not doing this alone. So it's it's always it always warms my heart when people understand the work that we're doing, and they appreciate what we're doing. So it it means that I'm doing my job and I'm doing the right thing. So, but but yeah. Um, with that being said, and I can say this now, um, 
I would definitely say definitely tune in to the December fourth tournament. You you'd be pleasantly surprised. I think for the first time, you know, since we had the 2019 um, GB National Tournament, I think we're going to be implementing instant replay, y'all. That's incredible. I think, that is I think, absolutely incredible. I think I think that would be the time. It'd be a nice tournament. We have a good idea of the teams and whatnot. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna go with instant replay. We got about a few weeks out uh, before then, so I have some testing to do on my end. Uh, but yeah, do not be surprised if instant replay with an NC is coming back, y'all. So that's really um, exciting. That is yeah. incredible. Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, I know our so, guys are excited about it too. They love our guys love seeing themselves on camera, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, people so. tend people tend to have a desire to perform better, want to play better once they know. Like they're like, oh, like this is being recorded forever, ever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, can't waste people time. I'm like, all right, let's go. So, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to implementing and some replay at this particular tournament and hopefully moving forward if everything goes well. Yeah, that is, that's without a doubt, I think a major step for us um, to be able to have that. And I think just solidify, you know, how far we've come as a league um, and, you know, how high we're looking to go. Uh, Just taking that next step. And it's huge. Really excited about that. I'm glad that you brought that up. That'll, That'll help me. Uh, that'll help me get through. <laughs> I think these next few weeks, um, we'll be excited for that. Oh yeah! Always gotta share some good news, man. Always gotta share some good news. But of with course. that being, but yeah, but with that being said, this has been a really good broadcast. I really have to say, my name is Shadi Drayfor. Got the the head coach, the myth, the legend himself, Colin Sports. Um, big fan of the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Oh, trust. Man, love, big trust. Big trust. Big trust. <laughs> oh, God. I love that video with Mark Ingram. That was so beautiful. So wholesome to watch. Oh, man. But yeah, but we'll that bounce means back that... this week. We'll, we'll take down the Bears this week. The Bears. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Right. Hammer it. Lock it in. We're bouncing back. Big big day for Lamar. He's going to go 300, 100 rush yards, three total TDs, whoop up on the Bears. Nice. Take it to the bank. Nice. Take the and, bank. and take it to the bank. I love to hear it. We can definitely end on that note, guys. And with that being said, enjoy the rest of your evening. And I hope that you have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. Until next Thanks, time. Thanks, Shadid. Go Tigers. No problem. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem.